Guys, what I want to show you today is how we smoke and cure bacons. We've got Canadian bacon, which is made out of pork tenderloin and regular sides of bacon. Of course, you know where that comes from. It's how we do it here on our farm, our homestead. Make sure you don't get any of this on your forehead, though. Tongue beat your brains out trying to get to it. The first thing I do is get about a gallon of water in my pot here, and I measure out three pounds of Morton's Cure Salt. That's actually been out of business. Used to be Morton's Tender Quick. I got a five pound bag, so I measured out two pounds, dumped the other three pounds in there. It's gonna be three pounds of Morton's Tender Quick and three uh, cups of brown sugar to three gallons of water. I put it in about a gallon of water just to get all this dissolved because it'll get pretty hot and then I'll add my other two gallons of cold water with it to make my brine. Um, there's a couple things you don't want to do with this. You don't want to put meat in there that's warm. Uh, it needs to be cold so if you just got done butchering and it's warm it's not ready to cure yet. It's got to be cooled out. The meat has to be cold and so does the brine. So we've got our salt and our uh, brown sugar in there. We'll throw that on the stove get that going. That way it can start cooling down while we're getting everything else ready. Okay, we got our brine made and cooling. And got our side of bacon here. And I cut it down so it'll fit in my tote. And you want to layer those in there, fat to fat and meat to meat. So you want to alternate which way it goes in there. I'm only doing one side today. So we got the jowl here. We got the jowl and some real nice bacons here. So we're gonna get that done. And I'm going to throw some tenderloin in there. For those of you that don't know, that's what Canadian bacon's made out of, pork tenderloin. So we'll start layering those in there, get a tote full, and get it ready for the brine. These are store-bought tenderloins. They're on clearance, and I don't mind them for Canadian bacon. So I cut them in half just so they're short. The refrigerator I do this in is an old, old like an apartment-sized refrigerator. Uh, so it's not too big. It'll stack two of these totes in there. So... Uh, we just layer, we'll layer the tenderloins in there, and uh, I'll show you the next important step here in just a second. Now guys, you want your hard hat for this next part. This meat will float in that brine, so you need to find some rocks to put on top of it. And what you, the reason you're going to need your hard hat, when you bring these in your house and ask your wife to wash a mess of rocks, when she's done staring at you like a monkey doing a math problem, she's liable to whack you with her own pen. You guys, because I like free stuff. And getting on uh, these are cut off pieces from a local monument company and they just give them to me uh, matter of fact there's a whole pile of them down there they give me for a washout they don't know what to do with them so they're cut off they make great for this they're easy to clean up or a slick finish um, and they wash up nice may not need the hard hat if you use something like this now if you just go out and creek and get you one uh, you may even want to put a towel under your hard hat get your meat layered in there get it rocked down uh, brine's cool now and if patience ain't your long suit because you bring that up to boiling on uh, to dissolve the brown sugar and the uh, curing salt if patience ain't your long suit I pour a gallon of cold water in there and about eight pounds of ice eight pounds to the gallon of water and that gets it down cool enough we can go right to work with it now if you've ever seen a cow peeing on a flat rock you know not to put some rocks in there before you pour your brine in we're gonna make enough of a mess as it is so we got to do this while the wife's out doing chores and whatnot so she don't know we've been doing it. If we make a mess, we'll blame it on the dog. If you want your meat completely covered, of course, with your brine. <coughs> and we'll snatch the lid on her and get it out in the, get it out in the refrigerator. Let's start cooling. Okay. Of course, your meat's been in the cooler for a couple of days. I leave it in there about six to seven days, depending. Uh, it's, my refrigerator is running about 34 degrees, which is about perfect for what I like. It's got the meat down to about 34. Uh, but about every two days, you need to do what's, well, they call it overhauling the meat. You don't have to drop a pan and put new rod bearings or nothing in it. You just need to pull it out and rearrange it so that everything's exposed to the brine like where that meat's touching each other isn't going to get as much brine in 
you can see it right there. You can see it. Well, you probably can't. I can. I can see a little bit of a line there where there's some more brine than other. That old jowl, this had good. Uh, good contact but basically what we're going to do is we're just going to turn this meat over turn it around well like I say they they call it overhauling it and that's what we're going to do oh get some right in your eyeball the old bacons are looking pretty good say we just put it in there oh it, it could be in the same order but I turn stuff around and rotate it just a little bit just so it's hopefully not setting exactly how it was and you'd be hard-pressed to get it to set exactly how it was last time then we're laying flat and I'm gonna stand them on an edge you still want it packed in there pretty tight that way it don't take quite as much brine to cover everything up uh, pack her in there it depends on how it packs always got a little bit of brine but we'll put these we'll put these tombstones on there and weigh her back down and I think I really think we're gonna be okay that needs overhauled every two days and then I brine for six to seven days for smoke Coons living in there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I got metal bars hung up in here and they're pretty stout. I can hang my meat hooks off of them. Smoke off the wood stove will come out there. Uh, in the summertime I'll, or in hotter weather, I'll use the other smoke generator. It comes out there, it condenses. Uh, so I keep pan under that whole water. Uh, got some stuff on the floor, just soak up grease and keep my meat hooks in here. We'll get the meat put in there before we build the fire. Usually I do it backwards. I build the fire and get it smoking and then I hang meat in here and then my eyes is a water and it looks like I've been having a sad day. Okay, take, get the weights off there, get the meat out, get the meat hooks in there. Uh, you can make your own meat hooks, I'm sure. You can buy them meat hooks off the internet. It's pretty dang cheap. Ain't hardly nice stainless steel meat hooks. Tenderloins, I usually just put two hooks in it. I don't want one of them ripping out. We'll start getting stuff hung in there. And you don't want them... You don't want them touching each other. You want to be able to get smoke all the way around them. Now the bacons, I highly recommend you can buy them hooks made for hanging bacon. If you're going to do it very much, if you ain't going to do it much, you can build them out of coat hangers, welding rods, or whatever. But if you're going to do a few, them little bacon holders is pretty nice. And they're pretty reasonably priced. The nice thing about using those bacon hangers, they'll hang in strips perpendicular to your to your rods. If you put two or three hooks in them, then you're using up so much rod per bacon. But if you do those other, they're like hanging shirts in a closet. You can get a lot of them in there. Get out of there, though. <laughs> you don't think they'd eat none of that if they could reach it, would you? It's probably too salty. I'll bet they wouldn't even eat it. Okay, we got four bacons hung in here, about a half a dozen loins, three loins cut in half, and a jowl. That's all going to have a smile on one side of his face, I guess. Uh, we're ready to build a fire. 
Now, next thing you want to do is gather up your stuff to build a fire. For those of you guys that's been grew up on uh, processed chicken nuggets and whatnot, what I like is a couple of strips of inner tube, some baler twine, an empty oil jug, and then just for flavor, a couple PVC joints. That'll make a nice, nice black sooty smoke to finish your bacons out. If you're used to eating chicken nuggets, that'll be right up your alley. I'm used to eating home cooking, so instead I'll run over here in the weeds and get me a little short hickory sprout, or small hickory sprout. Yeah, I earned it, give her a thumbs up there somewhere. If I didn't, don't. Uh, let me know if you like watching this kind of thing. Appreciate it. fire just take ashes out of your wood stove or coals out get you a bed of them started in there well you're not putting lighter fluid and paper and everything else on your start your fire with the meat already hung in there now on top of coals I'm throwing a little bit of bark and stuff in there I want to get a good base because my I want to get them hickory pieces started I don't want too big of pieces that's going to burn too long uh, and dry out and make a flame. I want them to smoke. Well, we got her to smoking. She'll build up. It, it ain't coming out real fast, but when I shut that door, it'll build up all up. I'll get you guys set up to open the door. You hear her on it and see it or see it coming out all around the edges here in a bit. She'll fill her plumb up in there. There she got a good smolder going on. Guys, you don't want any more fire in there than just what it takes to keep this thing full of smoke. It's called cold smoke and I got a thermometer right here and I don't want that thing to ever get over 85 degrees. Uh, you cold smoke and you're not trying to cook this meat. You're not trying to render any uh, fat out of it. You don't even want the meat good and hot. Uh, 65 to 85 degrees is where you want. And that's where this smoke generator comes in. If I smoke in the summertime, this in here will actually even put in less heat than this one. Um, and it's pretty easy. You can fill this thing up full of grill pellets and light it right here and put a little fish aerator pump on here with a little valve and it will just you can adjust that valve to where the smoke's right and you ain't putting any heat in there to speak of and that thing works real well too uh, when it's cool out like today uh, it's over freezing it's, it's 50 it'll probably hit 50 degrees it was 36 this morning which would be uh, 3 or 4 celsius uh, and it'll hit 50 today I think I'll be good on this listen here um, it's going this stovepipe here is not even ice lukewarm that's about it oh yeah well I've been smoking for about uh, 18 hours or so since fire went out I'd say they're good to go we'll throw them in the freezer get ready to slice them up after being a bit in the freezer this will thicken up where it's sliced good uh, so then slice it up and package it. You want to make sure you don't get any of this on your forehead though. Tongue beat your brains out trying to get to it. You're worthless. You're worthless hound dog. <laughs> 